Welcome, sixth grade. Hopefully you're uh, getting your math done or watching the video extra times if you need to. Today we're going to work on solving the review problems. You did them on paper, you put your answers in online, and then <clears throat> you added your work. All right? Please make sure you've done this. So today we start with number four. This one says evaluate. That means, oh, whatever y is, we put in for y. 56 divided by 7, 8, 49 divided by 7, 7, 42 divided by 7, 6. Then we go there. They said length times width equals area. So they've given you the length is always 9. The area changes. So a 9 by 1 rectangle is 9 times 1, oh, it's 9 squared. 9 times 2, it's 18. 9 times 3, we got our 27. And 9 times 4 is our 36. All right. Next problem, number 8. They were pretending bags of marbles. There are five bags always. But then there are the number of marbles in the bag. If we have 15 marbles in a bag, well, five bags with 15, five times 15, is 75 marbles. If we have 16, we're going to have 90 marbles. 17 would be 105 marbles. No, that doesn't seem right. That'd be 30, that'd be 90, okay? That'd be 35, and that'd be 50, that'd be 95 marbles, excuse me. All right. And that'd be 30 and 50. That should be 80. I apologize. It didn't seem right in my head. So five, 15 marbles in a bag, that's 75. 16 marbles in a bag, that's 80. 17 marbles in a bag, that's 98. And with 18 marbles in it, 17 marbles in a bag, 95. With 18 marbles in a bag, it would be, oh my golly gee whiz. 17. 5 times 17 is 85. Hopefully you're all going, oh my gosh, Mr. Palm, you need to wake up. Then 18 times 5, that's your 90. It's been a long day of reading papers, so uh, not really with it. Here we go. Now, write these as an equation or an expression, actually. <clears throat> Product of 6 and 5. 6 times 5. Good answer. Quotient of g and 9. G divided by 9, or G divided by 9. Either works. Then they want you to write these as words. 15 plus X. Great job. All right. This is actually should be M. M divided by 20. Keep it as simple as you can. You should have probably written the word divide in there. Again, being lazy. All right. 5,164 or plus 64. So you would do 5,100 100 minus, skipping down to the next line, 64. And you're good to go with a happy answer. This one would be a G minus 20. Remember, order is important when we do minus or subtraction and division. Now here it says write an expression. That doesn't mean, oh, that one's one, zero, two. Oh, this one's five, so that one's four. I don't want what goes in this box. I want the equation. Oh, so if this line is n, how did I get down to here? One, I went to zero. Hmm. Two, I went to one. Three, I went to two. Four. How did it change each time? Oh, it was minus one. So to get from the top n to the bottom would be n minus 1. Your answer would be n minus 1. 
When they say expression, please know they're not looking for the answer. They're looking for an equation or an expression to show how you get there all the time. 24. This one says, tell me if 6 is a solution to this. 12, a constant. T, a variable. Next to each other, that means multiply. So 12 times 6 equals 74. Well, 12 times 6, that's 12 and 60. That's 72. Uh, that does not equal 74. Does not equal. So no solution. This one. Does 3 solve this problem? So 96 divided by 3 equals 32. So that's 3. That's 2. They do equal? Yes, it is a solution. Good job. Now they start the solving process. We start with addition. Inverse of addition is... Hopefully you said subtraction. So if I want to get n all by itself, I subtract 10. I subtract 10 to this other side to keep that scale balanced, right? Do it to one side, do it to the other side. All right, so from there we go. N equals 14. 14 plus 10 is 24, skiddly do. Continuing with addition problems, work on left or right. Hopefully you see left because it's got the variable. Subtract 16, subtract 16. All right, that means six is the answer here. All right, and why is the answer here? Six plus 16 makes 22. Good answer. Inverse operations, we're gonna do subtract 94, because W will be by itself. Subtract 94, we get nine as an answer. W equals nine. Remember, we're using inverse operations. Now we sit, switch to subtraction. So if it's subtraction, we're going to add, all right? whatever you want to show. So k minus 17, 28. We work on this side because it's got the variable. If I'm taking 17 away, I should probably add 17 in. <clears throat> add 17 in. Add 17 to the total. Add 17 on that side. That would get me 5. 45 equals k. 45 minus 17, that does equal 28. Using inverse operation gets us the answer. All right, we have subtraction. We have that. Work on this side, because it's got the variable. Plus 55, plus 55. All right, P equals 63. 63 minus 55 does equal eight. We're good to go. Subtraction again, so we continue to use inverse operations. Plus 11, plus 11. R equals 14. 14 minus 11, that is 3. S minus 17 equals 14. This was from the Summer Olympic has <clears throat> 17 more games than the Winter Olympic. Well, how many games does the Summer Olympics have if the Winter Olympics have 14? So Summer Olympics, that's the S, minus 17 equals 14. So we're going to add 17 games to the Winter Olympics. That would be a 1, 31 games for the Summer Olympics. And it told us the Summer Olympics had more, so that would be a good answer. You may want to write games here just for grins. All right, we're all ready to 40. You guys are going fast. Here, now we're doing inverse operations. 3 next to the Y means multiplication. If there's multiplication, we need to do division, the inverse of it, right? So we divide by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Oh, that's why. We divide by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. Y is 9. 9 times 3, that makes 27. We're happy. Here we go. 18 times N divided by 18, because we want to get the N by itself. Divide by 18, n equals 2. 2 times 18, yep, that's 36. 11 times t, using multiplication, so hopefully you know division will undo it. Divided by 11, <coughs> excuse me, 
Divide one side by 11, you divide the other side. So t equals 10 when I do that division. 11 times 10, that makes 110. Now we get the multiplication ones, which you did on your own on quarantine. I like to put my placeholders on all the sides. Just helps me remember what to do. I look at the side with the variable, Jenna. Okay, R divided by seven. Well, how do I undo division? I multiply. So if it's dividing by seven, I multiply by seven. Now, is seven, Jenna, divided by one? That's still seven. But now when I write it like this, I can realize seven on top, seven on bottom. That means seven divided by seven. It goes away and I have just R. Now, if I multiply by seven on one side, I do want to multiply by seven on the other side. Both denominators are one. I really don't need them then. Seven times six, that's 42. Now I could have written 42 over one. That is fine and dandy, but what's 42 divided by one? It's 42. Remember that identity property? All right, <clears throat> down here, work on this side. Y divided by three. So I'm gonna multiply by three over one. Do it on the same, or the same thing on the other side. Oh, that cancels out. Y equals 18, because three times six is 18. I could put 18 over one, but do I really need to? Last one of the day. Z divided by 13 equals six, or equals four. All right, hmm, I'm gonna multiply by 13. Multiply by 13. I just like to write it over one, so I realize what to do on this side. <gasps> hey, they cross out. Z equals, it's 40 and 12, that's 52. 52 divided by 13, that does equal four. We've done all these problems. Attached is form B. Form B is not homework. Form B is a way to prepare for the test, a way to see problems that are going to be on the test, but just with different numbers. So it's a way to prepare. It is not homework. It will not get you points. Turning in the images of your work from the review is what will get you the points. But form B, which I'll share on here as well, will only be to help prepare you for the test. Thank you, sixth grade. Bye-bye.